Welcome everybody to Urban CG TV. As usual, I am your host, the Art Poet. All right, let's get started. First, we're going to go over to File and we're going to click on Append. As you can see, there it says the Warhammer. Uh, and it's a battle weapon that I created a, a couple weeks back. I'm going to bring this into the Blender game engine and attach this weapon in, onto the model. I'm going to make some cool animations. Now we're going to press S to scale this object. I'm trying to not too small, but make it big enough to where it still looks scary while this creature is wielding it. Alrighty. I'm going to speed the video up a little bit just to conserve some time. Right now, uh, I'm rotating the object and I'm going to place the object into the into the monster's hand. Once I do that, I will show you the process of how I go about attaching this um, hammer model onto the, the creature model. Scale it up a little bit. Get it right. I'm probably going to have to lean it the way his hands are. Nice little speckler map on this hammer as well. By the way, these game assets will be available for download soon. So you got to stay on the lookout for that. Alright, looks pretty good as far as the placement in the hand. Now I click on to my rig. I'm going to go to the... Yeah, that'll be good where everybody can see it. And, you, and with this simple rig right here, I don't have a hand. Actually, I just have a forearm and then go into the fingers. So I want to click on, we're going to use this forearm and we're going to attach this weapon onto the forearm. Hope you guys saw what I did right there. I clicked on the hammer model. Once I clicked on the hammer model, I clicked on the bone rig which was the forearm bone then I hit control P and I went down to uh, bones it's just under automatic weights hopefully you guys got all that alright seems that we have the hammer attached to the hand of the creature now we're gonna adjust these fingers a little bit to have it looking a little bit better before we go on to some animation guys bear with me for a minute kind of follow my workflow And also, I'll be getting a lot of positive um, responses from you guys about these uh, latest creature models I've been putting out. I hope, hopefully, it inspired you guys to uh, come up with a lot of creatures of your own as well. Alrighty. Well, now we're going to move this over just a little bit. I probably should have widened the grip of the hammer especially for this particular model but I didn't really worry about it I don't think it's gonna it's not gonna really affect anything as far as animation goes anyway um, probably gonna add some some teeth to this model though. Got kind of lazy on the mouth. I didn't know what I wanted to do with it. All right, guys, looks like it's it's going pretty good. As I grab the forearm bone, press G to grab. So I can move this bone around. And with the IKs that I have connected to the forearm, it moves the whole arm. It makes the animation process a lot more easier 
that much more bearable. Take this off. These are the different bones that you can have, and I'm, I like using the wires because they, they uh, it doesn't, it's not as distracting as the other bone features. I'm probably gonna have to use the other ones for when I'm starting to animate, but I like how these look. He's looking like he's going to war, some like a war pose. That's not gonna be for the game engine. It's pretty good though. Oops. I kind of forgot to take those logic breaks off of the Warhammer. I was going to do that right now. I'll also probably take it off for the creature as well. It's still in showcase mode. the animation alrighty just setting up my, I got my own personal preferences how I like my canvas to look before I start working so don't mind what I was just doing alright as I go to the dope sheet I'm gonna turn that into an action editor and then I'm gonna go over to the blank space and I'm gonna name that idle I would press F, but I'm not going to press F yet to finalize it because I ain't put any any animation or any poses into it yet. Move this around. Give me a little bit of room. And the first animation we're going to do is an idle pose. I'll probably end up doing a walking or running and maybe one or two attack poses, but that'll be in another video. Today we're going to focus on the idle pose, which is going to which is fairly easy. At least how I do it anyway. It's not going to be too much work. And usually for an idle pose, I'll pose it one time on the first frame. I'll pose it another time on frame 50. And then the last pose, well I'll get the first pose, copy it, and then paste it on frame 100. So that it has a perfect looping process, but it's a very uh, a very slow animation by doing that. If you want to speed it up, you can do one through thirty, one through sixty, depending on the character. All right, move his mouth up a little bit, especially for the first pose. Kind of when I'm breathing heavy, still standing in a uh, intimidating. He still looks intimidating. I'm gonna move that arm out. Turn from the right side. All righty. Because as I grab, you guys can see I have the full arm. I hit R to rotate. I'm moving it back. I'm trying to get it in a positional. That I think would look best for him. And then I got the first pose, so I'll hit A to uh, select everything. Then hit I to bring up the keyframes menu and select ro location, rotation, scale. And that's where you'll save the first keyframe. Now I'm moving on to frame 50. 
and I'm posing the model again a little bit different I'm going to bring the shoulders up I'm also going to um, ball the fist as well have his fist ball up showing making the notions that he's uh, breathing heavy grab the fingers and I hit R to rotate them just a little bit uh, messed up a little bit I don't think I want a full fist ball but just enough to make it noticeable I'm going to hit A again to select everything, hit I, location, rotation, scale, and that one's done. What I did for the last one, I went back to the first frame, and I went to pose menu at the bottom, and I clicked on it, and I went to copy uh, keyframes. Since so I copied the keyframe, I went um, all the way to keyframe 100. And once I went to 100, I went back to the pose um, button beside select, and I went to paste, and it pasted the key, the first keyframe. So the first and the last keyframe are practically the same. The middle one is what's different. As you can see, it's causing it looping, a looping uh, animation. Where it keeps it fluid, it looks real. <clears throat> All right, and that's that's it for today, guys. Um, tune in for the next couple of videos. I'll be doing a walk cycle, run cycle for this character, and probably one or two animations as well. So, guys, stay on the lookout for that. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe and also visit uegames.com. Uh, a lot of my tutorials that aren't featured on my channel are up there and go into a little bit more detail about rigging and other things as far as game asset models. There's also a store in which I sell my models on uegames.com. With that, see you guys next time and peace.